Movement is one of the elements that plays in the determination of how good of a player you are. Therefore, today we're going to completely break down every single number we can, and with that, figure out what's what. On top of that, I'll pass any information I know and have gathered. Some of it are hard numbers, while other parts are my personal opinion. But mostly, we do stick with the facts. So let's get to it. First thing we're going to look at is movement speed. To know when to run with which weapon is a good habit to get used to. I've spent hours getting these numbers and they're as close as it can possibly get until any hard numbers are released from the developers. You may be wondering, fucklet, why am I watching 9 different screens? Well, I think it is important for the test that I just show exactly how I did it. Basically, I found the only aligned place on the map, which is the bridge connecting the military base to the rest of the island. From here, I went and got every single variation of a gun and tested it out. Made sure everything was perfect, that there was no desync, no interruptions of any sort. I did have to do a few reruns, so yeah, you could imagine it took quite some time, but we finally managed to get there. But from here on out, now you're going to see them roll in the goal line, finish line, and now we're going to switch over to look at a graph that I made just to show exactly how much faster the weapons are, and there, yeah, that's it. So here we have the hard numbers of which is faster. As we can see, running with unarmed, with a grenade, melee weapon such as the pan or any of the pistols grants you the exact same movement speed. So it's viable to run with a pistol out if that's what you want. Let's bring up the SMGs. Across the board, all the submachine guns are in fact very close to running with any of the past four options, which then tells us it's not a dumb idea to run with your submachine gun out. As an example, the UMP is a decent choice of weaponry at medium range, which then could potentially save your life. So yeah, think about it. When we bring up the assault rifles here, we can see that this is where the drop in speed becomes noticeable when you're playing the game, at least in my opinion. It does slow you down almost a kilometer an hour, but then again, running around looting, you might still want to have a weapon out. It's not that big a difference. Lastly here we have the big boys, the M249 snipers and shotguns. They're all at 21.12 kilometers an hour, which is, I don't know, maybe a little bit weird that shotgun is slower than an assault rifle. I'm not much of a shooter in real life, but uh, in video games, you know, pew pew. Anyways, that's how it looks here. But let's put some more numbers on it. So if we have our baseline at 22.5, we can then calculate that our submachine guns will be at 1.86 and our assault rifles 4.22 and the big boys comes in at 6.13 and that is pretty much all the numbers that I can give you on the movement speed spending with guns but we're not completely done yet because what about the boost items how much faster do we run with those well without boost and with the first two bars we have the exact same running speed, no difference, 22.5 kilometers an hour, which is all right. But if we pop a little bit more of that sweet energy drink, we'll find ourselves at 22.92 kilometers an hour, which is a decent boost, noticeable. However, how much boost can we get? Well, the little last bar gives us a little over a kilometer an hour increasement, which ends us at 20. 23.76 kilometers an hour which is very noticeable in game especially in those last circles where you just keep popping them and keep running around like a crazy lunatic but yeah however this part only lasts for about 200 meters so if we yet again have our baseline speed at 22.5 we can then see that we get an increase by 1.86 percent with the second to last bar an entire 5.6% increasement from the last one. So now we've broken it down, we figured out, well, only the last two bars give us a boost, which is good to know. Now, one of the things I love the most about this game is not even the game, it's that the developers are sharing so much information on what they're working on. It's absolutely amazing. I'm sure you feel the exact same way, just as some um, this jumping over obstacles and such. You'll even be able to jump through a window in a, in a later patch, which is cool. But for now, 
since we can't do that yet, I'm going to show you a few in-game tips and tricks where uh, how to crouch jump, but uh, jumping into water we're going to discuss and yeah, let's get to it. Now, first of all, let's talk about the jumping into water from high altitude. I told you that in my tips and tricks guide that you could jump into water from high altitude. However, that is not the case in all the scenarios. From the bridge, however, you are good to go. So go ahead. I haven't died to that a single time ever. But if you jump into water from, let's say, this cliff here that we're climbing, you might actually die. I don't know if it's because it's too high or the water, water is too shallow, but just personally, I'm just going to stick to jumping into water from the bridge and then try from places such as this if I'm forced to by the circle. But as you see, it doesn't always work. You can get higher by crouch jumping. Just crouch in space at the same time, basically. You can practice this at the spawn island, and this can help you move around in the open world. Now, some locations have cool spots to go to, such as this, where people usually land up there on the roof. You could go down here, jump up, use your movement, hit, and then sprint up. From here, you can stay hidden on this little roof. The only place you can get seen by is the building. Or you could go down into the house, loot, or just hide for the rest of the game like a, like a skirt little boy or a girl. But it's, a, it's an option. We also have these radio towers. Just when we talk about movement, if you just sprint down, you can't get stuck here. Now for some reason I didn't die this time, but I have lost a, a late game to it. So, it's just one of those small things. Also, when we're talking movement, we have these different locations where we can use our movement to get an advantage. Let's say somebody is following you up in this building. You could jump up here and just go out here and hide. Explore around. Try jumping across rooftops. Find new sweet spots that you could call your own little known secret. Or in the hospital if somebody's following you. Now, you could run down the hallways, grab a gun, but you could also stand on the roof, wait for them to get up there and just check each angle sort of like this some viewers have asked me how do I play the end game circles well first thing we need to clear up is that it's a completely different game end game scenario depending on whether you play solo do or squad games so my way here that I just briefly explain what I do in a solo queue might not work in one of the others think of it this way in a late game circle with 24 people left this is how it potentially could look in a solo game. Everyone is spread out. Now, if we move to the duo, people are a bit more gathered. You can see there are some people in groups, and yeah, I know it's not an exact scenario, but this is kind of how it could be. And finally, the squad games, which gives us the most room to play around with. So that is why my explanation of the following is as such. In solo games, I want to make sure that I have a car right from the get-go. So I'll be able to push into the late game circles and place myself in a tight bush, a house alone, a rock where I cannot be seen from any angle. Or if nothing else works, just a regular shit shack. Now if I do not have a car, I'm forced to either run in really early or play the outer circle. Now the outer circle is dangerous and this is where the most players die. The circle gets smaller and obviously pushes players towards one another. This is kind of a brief way of saying it, but if you want to see how I play, I will start live streaming soon when we've got a bit higher subscriber count. So if you're not a sub yet, hit that button. I'm sure there's more numbers we could break down potentially, talking movement and PUBG. However, I do not feel like measuring how fast we walk backwards or sideways compared to running normally will help us improve our game in any way. So talk and movement, I hope you got something you can take with you from this video. Now that we know that running with a pistol out early game, if you don't have any other weapon, does not impact your movement speed at all. Well, the only downside to having a pistol out is that it takes slightly longer to switch to another weapon compared to switching from unarmed to a weapon. But that is it for this movement video. The next video will be episode 2 of Mythbusters. And right now, my ETA for live streaming will be starting at the next at the reset of the season, so at the start of next season. Stay cool, stay awesome, and thank you so much for watching. Peace.